taking notes on YouTube videos straight from your browser, uploading all the images that you want while taking zero space, adding long Twitter threads in a single screenshot. All of this and more coming up. Timestamps are shown here as well as in the description below. Okay, so we're going to start with an overview of how Obsidian handles media. And if you remember from previous episodes, Obsidian files don't live on Obsidian servers. They live wherever your vault lives and they're simple markdown files. As a reminder, when you add a new node to Obsidian, a new markdown file gets created inside where your vault lives. And the way Obsidian handles media is very similar to that. So let's see this in action. Okay, so here we are back at our mastering Obsidian Vault that we opened up in the beginning of this series. And let's open up a new node by pressing Command N and we're going to call it Episode 4. Okay, so now let's say you want to add a picture of some kind, maybe a screenshot. And for that, we're going to take this example here of the thumbnail from my Obsidian 2 video. And we're going to drag and drop it into the Obsidian Vault. And once you do that, it's going to show up like this, but don't be alarmed. All you need to do is press command E to go on the preview mode. And now you can see the image overlaid here. So the way this works now is that Obsidian has put this image over here as its own note. And if we go back to the folder where your vault lives, you can see that your image is now sitting right here. So now you might be thinking this is going to get pretty cluttered over here on the side and your file explorer very quickly. And you'd be totally right but this has a relatively easy fix. So for that, we're gonna make this one big and we're gonna create a folder here. So we're gonna come here new folder and call it attachments. And now we come here to settings, files and links, and we come to the bottom where it says default location for new attachments. We click on the drop down menu and we're gonna select in the folder specified below. And now we can choose where we want Obsidian to place all of our attachments inside of. So as you just saw, I created an attachments folder which sits right here. So I'm gonna press that, exit out of this, delete this note, and drag and drop it once more. So it's sitting right here in the desktop. I'm gonna drag it here. And if you notice, it hasn't showed up here on the side. And if we come here to attachments, it lives here now. I like to take this one step further because I never go on the attachments folder. So I don't even want to see it over here. So I actually put the attachments folder inside journal. And if you want to add videos or audio files, the process is the exact same. You just drag and drop it into your Obsidian Vault and the note is going to show up here inside your vault in the attachments folder. But this is just the very beginning. I consume a lot of YouTube content and a lot of those videos are educational videos that I'd like to keep and reference to in the future. And Obsidian makes that very easy. So to add YouTube videos, we're going to first come over here to YouTube. And for obvious reasons, we're going to pick one of my videos and we're going to click the share button. And then we're going to press embed. And now we have here a piece of code that we can just copy and paste into Obsidian. Then we come over here to preview mode and we have our video right here. Now I like to take notes on the YouTube videos that I watch and there's a much better way than simply writing a block of text underneath the video. And for that, there's a great browser extension that's free and lets you take notes on your videos while you watch them. And not only that, but it also adds the respective timestamp of when you took the note. So if you took a note at the two minutes, 20 second mark, that timestamp is going to be clickable and show up on the screen. All right, so let's watch this in action. And the plugin that I'm referring to is called World Brains Mimex. Bit of a weird name, but it works beautifully. So we're going to add it to Chrome. We can then refresh our page. And when we come over here to the toolbar, and we press it, it tells us that to open the sidebar, we must press option Q. So we turn it on, press option Q, and we have the sidebar over here. All right, so now I'm just going to pretend that I'm taking notes on my own video, which is a little weird, I'll admit. It's going to press play, command Q to toggle the sidebar. And let's say I'm watching this cool subscriber intro. So I can just come here, insert timestamp. And you see now it knows that I took this at eight seconds. Okay, so let's pretend I keep watching. All right, now I notice that it's not great lighting, for instance. I can just come here once more. Not great lighting. I'm just giving you guys examples, obviously. So then when you're done, it's time to put this back in Obsidian. And there's a bunch of different ways of sharing out of Mimax over here. But you, something as simple as a copy and paste will do. So we come back here to Obsidian. And this is the video, right? So we come here to underneath the video. 
and now we have the notes on the timestamps. And if you press a timestamp, it's gonna take you back to your browser and play that clip of the video. Personally, I don't like to click it because I like to watch them on the Obsidian page. So I can just come here eight seconds and I can just, you know, scroll around to the eight second mark and that's good enough for me. Okay, so now let's move on to adding tweets to Obsidian. There's quite a bunch of people I follow on Twitter and some of them share really great insights that I definitely don't want to lose and I like to save them to my vault. And you can embed them the same way you would embed a YouTube video. Well, sort of. Let's take a look at it. There's a couple different ways you can embed a tweet into Obsidian. So we come over here to Chrome and we look at this random single tweet, very original by me. And if we want to embed this into our vault, one of the ways we can do so is coming here to more embed tweet. And it's gonna take us to this website, which is gonna give us a link. So if we copy the code and we put it into Obsidian, and now we have it displayed this way and it might be just personal preference, but this doesn't seem very appealing to me. The other way is by using TwitFrame, which is not as straightforward, but still simple. So if we come back to our Chrome, we can come here to TwitFrame and it's gonna give us this source code. We can just copy and paste this, move it back to Obsidian. And now we have Jack's tweet over here. So we come to edit and what we have to change is this URL right here. So if we change this URL with the URL to my random nonsensical tweet, we can now have it displayed a lot nicer. This is simple if you just want to embed a single tweet, but if you want to embed a big thread, that's gonna be a lot more complicated. Because if we come over here to my very insightful thread that I just posted, and we copy the link, and we switch it up here, as you can see, it only picked up one of the tweets, and maybe there's a way around this if you mess with the code here, now, I think this method is great for a single tweet, but if it's a long thread, something like 20, maybe even 50 or 60 tweets in a row, I like to take a long scrolling screenshot. And let me show you how I do that right now. So we can delete this, we won't be needing it. And let's come over here to my insightful thread. And now I use this app over here called CleanShot X, and it has a feature called scrolling capture so then you can just decide which part to record. So something like this, right? And you can say start capture and then simply scroll. And as you see on the right, it starts scrolling the whole thread. And I couldn't be bothered to make a 50 or 60 tweet thread storm, but you guys get the idea. So now it's over here and we can just copy, move it to Obsidian, paste. And here you have it. And it looks great in my opinion, and it has saved me a lot of time. Now this app is definitely not cheap. It's about $29. I mean, it does a lot more than just screenshots, but that's all I use it for. But luckily for me, this app is actually available on Setup. So I actually didn't pay for it. And for those that don't know, Setup is basically the Netflix subscription of Mac apps. You pay a monthly subscription of about $10, I believe, and you get access to hundreds of paid apps. This is not sponsored or anything. I just really like the service. I've been using it for years. I'll leave a link below to set up if you guys want to check out, if you're interested, take a look at their apps. I recommend it, but only if you do end up using a bunch of their apps. Otherwise, personally, I don't think it's worth it. Okay, so now that you know how to add media, such as pictures and videos, as well as tweets and YouTube videos, you might be thinking, this is all great, but if I upload a bunch of media to my vault, it's gonna get pretty big. And maybe you're on Dropbox free plan and you don't want to upgrade your plan or maybe you're running out of space on your iCloud and you also don't want to pay for a higher tier, which is all very understandable. So what if I told you there's a free way that you can upload pictures and small videos to your vault without taking a single bit of space? This is by using a service called Imager. You might have heard of it. And my buddy Santi did a great video on this that I recommend you guys check out. I'm going to leave a link in the description. But very quickly, you download the Imager plugin. It's a great community plugin. So we come here to settings, community plugins, browse, Imager. And you're going to see Santi's video right here. He goes a lot more in depth on this subject. So I highly recommend you checking it out. I'm going to click install and then activate. So then we can simply come here to Imager. And I recommend you guys go with an authenticated Imager upload. And it's very simple, just authenticate with your Imager account. 
So now I can just come here and add my thumbnail once more. And now it's going to ask you, would you like to upload to Imager or paste your content locally? And if you press upload, this is going to automatically upload into your Imager account. You see it says uploading and there you go. It's uploaded. And if you go on preview mode, you're going to see it just as good. If we come here back to Chrome and we go to our Imager account. And if we come here to our profile and we click on all pictures, there you have our thumbnail sitting right here and it's hidden. So nobody can see this and Imager does not delete your files. And with this, you've just saved yourself an insane amount of space. And again, big shout out to Santi. This is the kind of stuff that makes Obsidian amazing and something that other apps just cannot compete with. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for episode five in this series. Have a great one and I'll see you next time.